for coming out and uh, for your support of this bill and for support of life. Uh, I know many of you are involved in uh, uh, supporting women in crisis and uh, others back home in your respective communities and what a great mission that is to uh, be supportive of uh, a, a woman or women who may be pregnant unexpectedly uh, or may have had abortions in the past. Uh, you are a blessing uh, to, to those people who you work with and uh, thank you for that. I want to introduce uh, an attorney, and I'm not an attorney, so it's good to have an attorney around. Well, usually it's good to have an attorney around. <laughs> in, in this case, it's great to have an attorney around. Uh, Representative Bob Mecklenburg. Not only uh, am I an attorney, I'm a uh, Catholic boy from the west side of Cincinnati. <laughs> We have a lot of churches uh, there, if you've been there, and that's probably because we need them. <laughs> but I will approach this on a uh, secular uh, basis, since that's the way the argument should be carried on here in the legislature. And there were those that will argue against this, uh, saying, uh, stay out of our lives. Uh, this is a libertarian issue. Not so. Every libertarian in this country fundamentally believes in certain things, namely the orderly, natural propagation of your species. And this is why so many scientists are now coming around to this issue in our favor, because they know that no other species routinely snuffs out life like the human species does. There are those who would argue against, against this on economic basis. Oh gee, we can't address this issue right now because Ohio is in deep economic trouble and we can only talk about economic issues. I understand this argument. We just spent a lot of time with the budget, but we can also walk and chew gum at the same time, can't we? Um, and let's talk about the economics of the issue here. I listened uh, to a large part of the debate on the budget last week, and those who would be against this bill spent a lot of time talking about gifted children. So many gifted children in this state. We don't have any in my district because nobody called uh, suggesting we do that, but there are so many. Hours on the House floor last week. How are we going to support our gifted children? Well, let's look at all of the gifted children the millions of gifted children who never got the opportunity, never got the opportunity to perhaps discover a cure for cancer, never got the opportunity to drive our economy, never got the opportunity. Has our economy gone better because of uh, all of these millions of lives lost? I don't think so. I don't think so. Last on the legal basis, there are those who would say, oh no, we can't do this now because it's unconstitutional. Well, guess what? Seven judges in 1973 said so. But they also said that there are some issues there that maybe we need to be here looking at. Maybe when the science gets a little bit further along the way, how much more science do we need? How many more advocates do we need? that have come forward with physical and psychological harm due to the abortions in this state. How many more? The science is already there. We don't need to hear another heartbeat in committee, with all due respect to uh, Chairman Watchman. We don't need to see another sonogram. We know that the science is there. We also know that when Roe v. Wade was uh, initiated as a case, a ginned up case, by the way, um, they didn't ask questions like, oh, gee, it's uh, unconstitutional to bring this issue forward. No, they fought for what they believed in, so-called right of privacy. First time in constitutional history, a right of privacy was decreed by male judges, I might add. Why should we be so timid at this point? There is no major constitutional issue. Take the Dred Scott decision. 
There is no major constitutional issue that is ever overturned unless you ask, unless you fight, and unless you bring forward the strongest possible case. There were those that will also say that we should wait. The time's not quite right. There never is a perfect tide for any ship to be launched. You take the best possible time, and that's right now, and let's go with it, and let's fight for our rights. Thank you very much. Representative Mecklenburg was there at the press conference, uh, one of the smartest guys in the, in the Ohio General Assembly, as far as I'm concerned. Representative Ron Meg, I want to quote him so bad, but he's going to quote himself when he comes. He's been a leader on this. He's been uh, there from the very beginning, and we're grateful for his leadership. Thank you for joining us. Representative Meg. Uh, there for a second, I thought she was calling me one of the smartest people in the legislature. And I was really impressed. You might have saw me start making a move up here. I want to thank all of you for coming, and I want to thank all of you for keeping up the fight. Uh, Representing Mecklenburg talked about one issue that I think we're going to hear a lot about. It's unconstitutional. Well, the people that tell me it's unconstitutional, I look around, and none of them are wearing a black robe. So I'm not sure. And Ohio, if you recall, when it was back, uh, and I don't remember the date now, but the uh, partial birth abortion ban, it was born here, it was found unconstitutional. Other states fought, we continued to fight, and it's now the law of the land. Yeah. So we don't give up just because someone says it might be unconstitutional. And I think Janet's favorite quote, we were sitting down in the cafeteria, we were talking about this, and I told her, you know, None of the people, again, I've seen talking about this are wearing a black robe. But one day, one day, we will all face a judge. We will face that judge. And when he asked me, Ron, what did you do to protect the innocent, to protect our, the greatest gift that I have given mankind? I want to be able to say, and I'll be honored to say, I stood up for them. I voted for the heartbeat bill. These are the heroes. I, I was, what an honor it is to, uh, to even know them. They, and they still take my calls, which is really quite amazing. Here's one of my favorite legislators from back in the day. Uh, I, it's, I can't call you an old timer without being called an old timer. Representative Jim Beakey is one of the heroes in the movement who back when we were passing the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion, and there was an effort to undo it. And then we couldn't get in with the speaker's office. That's when we didn't have such a friendly speaker. You remember that. And I said, Jim, I can't get in that meeting, but can you get in the meeting? He says, I'm in. He went in and he helped to pass the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion. He's going to help to pass the nation's first heartbeat bill. Representative Jim Beakey, God bless you. Thank you very much, Jan. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, welcome and thank you for your commitment as we work to preserve life. Uh, I first joined the legislature in 1983, and this country was well up on its way from the 60s to abdicate responsibility. And we've turned over to government the responsibility to take care of ourselves. That's what's happened in the last 50 years. And along the way, we've lost respect for life. And it's high time that we turn that around. And that's what we're doing with House Bill 125. And all these people sitting behind me who serve, we all serve together, our numbers are growing because life is right. And I can't thank them enough for their commitment, but most of all, you working with, and Jan and I have worked together on these issues along with Representative Watchman and others since 1987 when we passed the bill. So let me just say, keep it up, keep our feet to the fire so that we all work to make sure that the sanctity of life is preserved for all. Thank you, Thank you Representative Jim Beakey, one of the heroes, back again for such a time as this. You know, there's a, a lot of people who are uh, heroes. If you've served in the nation's military, raise your hand. And if any, we've got some armed service people here, we want to thank you. Because we have someone who uh, served in the Marines very proudly. You can kind of tell by the haircut. 
Representative Danny Buff is uh, one, of the, one of the leading co-sponsors. He was there in the beginning, never once hesitated to do the right thing because he wants to see babies with beating hearts protected by law. Representative Buff, thank you so much. You know, Janet just mentioned our speaker, Bill Batchelder, and said how he's a pro-life individual. But we just left session a moment ago, and I will tell you there's heavy hearts in the House of Representatives because this week Speaker Batchelder's father passed away at the ripe old age of 96 years. Now, I say that because that is the way life should be. We should all have the opportunity to live that long, but we're here today trying to protect those that won't have that opportunity. And growing up, you know, our parents told us, watch out who you hang around with. You're known by the company that you keep. Well, behind me is a host of state representatives that are all pro-life, all dedicated to the Christian movement, and I am pleased to be here today with them. As we move forward with this legislation, I will tell you that uh, we are in support of it, and at some point, the courts will decide, but as uh, Ron Mag said a moment ago, you know, we all have that opportunity of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, and I will tell you that I am so proud of Lynn Watchman and his uh, energy in bringing forth this bill and let's see what happens and let it go through the court system and pray to God because God does answer prayers and I believe that we move forward that it'll all work out to the glory of God. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for supporting this movement. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to ask uh, Sarah Cleveland and Audrey Breyer, Dreyer to come here uh, very quickly. I want to thank you for the patience for our legislators. I know they've got to go back to work and uh, push for a vote on this uh, heartbeat bill. But I want to show you why we're here today. I just want to give you a little glimpse of, of what this thing is about. You're going to have to come. Can you come all the way up to the front? We're going to need a microphone. Now you need to come here. You have to pay more for a portable microphone. We don't do that. We're saving money to save babies. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, go ahead. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. If you can uh, be real quiet and listen, there's a baby inside here. This is what we're fighting for, guys. Let me see if you're She's 16 weeks along. She's 16 weeks along. Right now in the state of Ohio, abortion's legal through all nine months of pregnancy. There we got it. There we got it. that's come out today to support life. Um, I just want to kind of challenge everybody that's here today. Um, not just take a stand for two hours of your life on one day of the year. Uh, babies are aborted every single day. Somebody right now is getting an abortion. Many women right now are getting an abortion. There's abortion facilities right here in Columbus. There's four abortion facilities right here in Columbus. Two of them that will abort babies up to 20 weeks here in Columbus. If you're after 20 weeks, they will abort babies. In other cities in Ohio, they refer you on. That is legal right now. The heartbeat bell will protect the vast majority of those babies from the moment that their heart is detected. That is unbelievable, guys. That is crazy. I'm really excited. I want you guys to be motivated, not just to be here for one hour or for 20 minutes or for two hours to come and sit up and go home and not care. The pro-choice people are not what's keeping abortion legal, it's the difference of people keeping it legal. We need people to stand up, we need people to care, we need people to be active, we need people to pray. If you can't financially contribute to a crisis pregnancy center, you can donate your used baby clothes, you can donate your time. There's great local organizations that are very active in the pro-life movement, a lot of grassroots places that you can contact. Created Equal is a great new place. Um, uh, organization that is grassroots educating people about life before birth and, and, and abortion. 
there's sidewalk counselors out there. Every Friday, Saturday morning, all throughout the week, there's people that go and pray outside these abortion facilities. The, those are the, that's where we need to be, guys. That's where we need to show the, the support of the community for these women that are going in there that feel like they have no hope. We need to tell them that there is hope, that the answer to their problems is not abortion. So it's not you know, just enough to say that you are pro-life. I challenge you today to be pro-life. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Sarah Cleveland, who isn't from Cleveland, oddly enough. Uh, we have uh, from Southwest Ohio. Anybody from Southwest Ohio here? All right, we've got some constituents. Cliff Rosenberger, one of the prime sponsors, one of the least co-sponsors, was there in the beginning, never had to be asked twice. We're grateful that you're here. Welcome. You know, I don't know how you can question the amazement of God's creation when you hear something like that. I mean, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And so make no mistake that today is about one thing, and that's protecting those who cannot stand up for themselves. It's about protecting those who have no voice that's yet unheard. And it's about standing up for the rights of those of the unborn. And I can't stand here today and think of any better way than to sit here and support Lynn Watchman as he spearheads this movement and these great members of this legislature who stood up and said that we will no longer stand for this. And Ohio had a motto that said that we're the heart of it all. And Lynn, soon, this nation and this state will hear the heartbeats of many voices all throughout this land when we pass this piece of legislation. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. God bless you. Let's uh, go next to Representative Jim Butler. It wasn't too long ago, Representative Butler, we had uh, bagels right over here talking about the heartbeat bill. And his only question was, how can we protect the most babies? And we're convinced this is the way to do it. We're grateful for your support. Representative Butler, welcome. Thanks everybody for being here today. I have uh, uh, twin daughters. And uh, when you have twins, you, know, you come in for uh, an ultrasound uh, around eight or, eight or nine weeks. Uh, so I, and I still remember that day. Uh, went in, saw the ultrasound, saw my two girls, saw their beating hearts, uh, and, and ever since then, my life has really changed. Um, all through the all through the pregnancy, uh, my wife had a, a heartbeat monitor, and she would check, and uh, probably you know ten times a day to make sure that the girls were doing well and were were uh, were alive and well. So, um, heartbeat really means a lot, a lot to me. Uh, and it's just a travesty that uh, currently in our country and in our state, uh, it's legal to, uh, to take the lives of those uh, that have beating hearts. Um, I just want to say too that the uh, it's been discussed. You know, I, I think uh, Representative Mecklenburg mentioned that you have, you know, there, there Ohioans need jobs and the economy and all that. Uh, you know, that's certainly um, very important, but. We also need to be a moral society because a country without honor cannot survive long. Thank you very much. Mixed up the order. I wanted to get the first co-sponsor to go first after the sponsor, but we're grateful for his patience and we're grateful that uh, there's a guy that I ran into the hall. I met him within 30 seconds. He says, yeah, I'll co-sponsor the heartbeat bill. Why wouldn't I? I want to protect babies with beating hearts. We represent, we introduced you Representative Mike Haney. We're very grateful for your stand. It was an easy uh, decision. You know, that's one of the things I came here for is I, I'm a born raised Catholic. It's just part of my blood that it's uh, to protect the unborn. Um, I want to thank everybody here, and I want to thank Janet. Um, I've learned one thing in my short time here in Columbus, things don't move easy and fast through the legislation. Um, we, we need constant you know, encouragement and it, just to keep it going. Uh, it, as I say, things just don't move that easy. I had some prepared thoughts I wanted to share, but as I was listening to uh, my colleagues here, I, I, was, I got to think, you know, when I, um, I always thought myself was kind of a tough guy growing up, you know, I never backed down from a fight and all, and, uh, you know, uh, didn't, didn't ever, didn't usually cry very often, until I became a father. And all of a sudden, when I became a father, 
I, I can't help get choked up at commercials on, on TV now. Um, I mean, it's, it just really is a, uh, um, you know, to have that child is the most life-changing experience I've ever had in my life. And um, I, I, you know, I just can't imagine people missing that experience for whatever reason they feel is, is proper to have an abortion. Um, as you can imagine, this bill has promoted a lot of, um, we get a lot of emails, a lot of discussion. And some of those discussions um, I had with somebody, they, they were saying, well, I don't want to get into when life begins, because no one really knows that. Well, I, I think that's the crux of the argument. I mean, that's, um, we have, I think science is behind us too. We can now can take a drop of blood and determine what life that belongs to, and that D, from the DNA, and that DNA is determined on the day the sperm meets with the egg. I mean, that is we have determined that is life, and to say that we haven't um, that we it's still a choice to end that life. Um, is just wrong. Um, one thing all Americans are guaranteed is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is a civil rights issue, nothing more, nothing less. We, as legislatures and um, as, as Americans, I think it is our ultimate duty to protect those rights. And, you know, I thank you and I thank uh, Janet and, and everybody for, and all my colleagues who are supportive of this. Uh, they say this is, this is what it's all about. Thank you very much. These are heroes, these are real life heroes, and uh, it is a privilege. Man, I don't know if you realize, these are the guys taking the heat. They're on the front lines, they're leading the way. As I've mentioned in, in, uh, in past, uh, past speeches and, and events, that there are right now seven states lined up behind us, ready to pass a heartbeat bill. And, uh, there's even talk of one being introduced in Congress. We've seen that happen before too. It's exciting to see. And by the way, this poster over here, you gotta get out, you, know, you almost need to, to get a magnifying glass to read the names, the font is so small. We have, uh, and this is what I told one of the media cameras, not only do we have the support of the legislature, the vast majority of the legislature, late legislators are on this, it doesn't take a mathematician to say this bill's gonna pass. If it's being held up for any reason, it's not for lack of support, not in the legislature, not in the state, not in the country, because you'll see, We've got four presidential candidates on this bill. We've got Speaker Newt Gingrich, Governor Mike Huckabee, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, Judge Roy Moore, except for the Ten Commandments, the host of groups, the founder of the pro-life movement, the list goes on. It's an exciting time to be an Ohioan whose motto is, with God, all things are possible. The next gentleman I want to introduce to you is a guy that was on the committee who heard the hours and hours of testimony, Doc. Uh, he was there, and, and, and what I love is what I love is what makes our job easy is you don't ever have to worry about which way he's going to come down. You don't have to worry about which way he's going to vote on an amendment or on the bill itself. A man who has already had the privilege of voting to pass the heartbeat bill as it passed out of committee. We represent. We uh, introduce to you Dr. Terry Johnson. Dr. Johnson, thank you. How y'all doing? God bless you. Thank you for being here. I'm a practicing physician. I practice in Southern Ohio and I practice family medicine. I'm a teacher of family medicine. And I am pro-life. It's interesting when you look at the physician community across the state. There are so many pro-life physicians out there, so many, and others who are equivocal, that sort of ride the fence, and others that are on the other side. And as a physician, we're required to study science. We're required to be scientific in our thought process. That's necessary. But I found that oftentimes when we do that, we tend to make things more complicated than they really are. I'm certainly not an attorney, but when I look at what attorneys do, it seems like they do the same thing as docs. They make things very complicated. 
And I've heard so many people say, oh, there are these very sophisticated, nuanced reasons why this shouldn't happen now, why it will probably be declared unconstitutional. And they get all wrapped up to the point where they can't do anything. And then as a physician, if I look at embryology and DNA and RNA and all the things you look at, I could get wrapped up the same way. But then I go back to my grandmother when I was a very small boy. And I sat upon her lap and she told me about God. And she told me about God being able to see everything I did. You can't fool God and he keeps track. I believe my grandmother then and I believe her now. God doesn't want me to make this so complicated that I lose track of what's important. He doesn't want any of us to make this so complicated that we lose track of what's important. If you ever find yourself getting tied up in arguments that you can't win because they're so doggone complicated, the other side has won. The adversary has won. This is very simple. I'm a doctor because I value life and health. I'm a National Guardsman because I want to protect my fellow citizens. As a father, the number one job I have with the four boys that I have is to protect them, to help them to grow, to see that they're well educated and safe. My whole life is dedicated to protecting others. I stand firmly for the sanctity of life from beginning to end. When we look at the most vulnerable in society, they are our elders who depend on us to do the right thing, but yet have a voice. And they are the unborn who are absolutely dependent on us to do the right thing and have no voice. God will judge us, strong and smart as we are, by how we deal with those most vulnerable that we come in contact with as we go through life. Now, will this bill stand once we pass it? Well, go back to Ohio's motto. Ohio's motto is, with God, all things are possible. Don't forget that. Don't stop the fight. Don't let anyone change your mind on this. You're right. God bless you all. What a privilege. What a privilege. We will see very soon, once the heartbeat is detected and the baby is protected. Not so hard. People say, what's the bill? Explain the bill to me. It's really not so difficult. If you detect the heartbeat, we protect the baby. And someone who's willing to do that has stood up as one of the, uh, one of the leaders, one of the 50 finest men and women in the state of Ohio, the leaders in the state of Ohio. Uh, Representative Terry Boos, we're grateful for your stand, and thank you for stopping by to say a few words. Thank you very much. Um, I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I want to thank you guys because it's because of you that elected us that gives us this opportunity. If it wasn't for all of you, uh, we would not have this opportunity to do it. Um, I want to thank you. I have a dear friend who's got six kids of his own and have adopted three more babies simply because he says being part of Right to Life it's not just praying and making sure abortion doesn't happen, but we also have to take care of the children that are being born. And uh, there's a lot to this right to life. And I know each and every one of you will do everything you can. And I'm here to thank you for electing this fine crowd of people. Thank you. We're very grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, before I introduce uh, Representative Hayes, I know you're uh, you're you're in a hurry. If, if if can you hold on for one one minute? God bless him. God bless him. Because I wanted to introduce you. You've been hearing from a lot of men. I want to introduce you to one of the most articulate women, one of the 50 leaders in the state of Ohio who say, "I want it. The killing is going to stop on my watch. We're going to see children protected." She is uh, a hero for life. One of the most articulate I've seen, and we're grateful for Representative Christina Rovner. Representative Rovner. 
nice outfit, by the way, isn't it? I got the memo. Uh, so many bills that we pass in the Ohio House, you get a little fiscal analysis. We can measure these bills in dollars and economic impact. This bill, we are going to measure in lives. You've heard today from many representatives, you've heard from attorneys, you've just heard from a doctor. Um, I'm going to speak to you from my heart, or the heart of a mother. I'm a mom of three little girls, and each one, as you go in and you hear that heartbeat uh, on a little Doppler or in the ultrasound, it just you know that that's a baby, it's going to make it, and it was wonderful. With my fourth pregnancy, we went in, it was the beginning of the third month, and there was just silence. I didn't hear that heartbeat, and my heart broke, because a doctor came to me and said, this pregnancy is not viable. And uh, I never gave up praying, but the, the heart never did start to beat, but, but it, it did occur to me that even the doctors recognize that it's a viable pregnancy once that heart is beating, and each beat is precious, and each one of those babies deserves a chance for life, a chance to breathe, a chance to be held in their mother's arms or in an adoptive family's arms. I'm honored to be a co-sponsor on this bill. And if, if all we can do here uh, in this General Assembly is even save one life, just one life, it'll all have been worth it. And this bill will save tens of thousands. So I want to thank you. I want to thank again all the folks behind the heartbeat bill, including my fellow representatives. We will fight the fight in the General Assembly. I'm going to ask you to continue fighting the fight, the grassroots level, the prayer, working at the, uh, the whatever you do. I mean, just counseling, the, the pregnancy, the crisis pregnancy service centers.